Thanks for watching Money Lessons, a show that helps you understand money and take control of your financial future. Today, I'm joined by Karen Hines. She is the founder of Workplace Success Group and author of several books, including A Young Adult's Guide to the Global Workplace. Karen, so great to see you. Thank you for having me, Rhonda, and hello to your audience. You know, this is such an interesting time when you think about people just starting out. Um, the economy's rough. We're in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. but many people are eager to get out there and start their career. Um, what is the best advice you have for somebody currently looking for a job right now, their first job? You know, I think at this point, there, first of all, a lot of people might think that there's no hope and there are no jobs. So let me debunk that right now. There are jobs and there is hope. So with that, it's really important now to think about how do I begin to expand a network of people I know, and not only within my own community, but to reach out via LinkedIn and other networking platforms. Karen, when people think about a career to pursue, sometimes they think, do I want to do what I love if I don't make a lot of money? Or do I want to make a lot of money and um, stick with a job even though I don't really like it? Is there an answer to kind of that uh, perplexing situation people find themselves in? I have family members who are about to graduate college now who are thinking about that exact same question. I think what's important are a number of things. Number one, you need to be able to pay your bills. So let's start there. And I think because we have options now with the gig economy for students, if they're not sure what they want to do, this is a good time to start experimenting with side jobs or side hustles or the gig economy as they call. But you know, get the experience, get your foot in the door. You're not gonna get your dream job now. As a matter of fact, well, some people might, but for most of us, we waited until we're in our 30s or 40s to really figure out sometimes what we're really doing. So get the experience. As you begin to get that experience, you'll figure out where you want to be, unless you already know what that is. You actually have kind of an interesting story. You're in a career you never thought you would be in. If you could share your story with us a little bit right now. Well, I was going to be an ambassador or a lawyer or a doctor until I realized I don't even like blood or dealing with sick people or anything like that. <laughs> So I had no aspirations to be a business owner because of how it was presented to me. But I started doing what I love. I started experimenting. So the same advice I'm giving those individuals who are not sure what they wanted to do. I took a job that got me to pay my bills and to begin to explore different avenues and found out that I really love teaching and speaking and was able to do that in the corporate world. And that evolved from a couple of workshops for a number of organizations to now where we have uh, over 20 year training and consultant company that worked in leadership and diversity and inclusion. I'm glad you brought up diversity because that is a big issue on people's minds, especially in the last couple of weeks where we've seen companies um, speak very loudly and proudly that they're focusing on efforts of diversity and, and inclusion. But um, as I'm sure you know, we've heard things like this before. So how do you know as a young person looking at a company, whether those diversity efforts are reality and not just talk? I think you have to look at the track record of the company. And some companies are recognizing now they do not have a track record. So they're putting pieces in place and they're publicizing that. As a young person, do your homework on the company. Look and see what's going on in the media. Look at their website. You know, talk to, connect with people on LinkedIn to actually find out what that company is actually standing for. And just monitor them. I think that's important because companies are now trying to grapple with what does it mean to have a diverse workforce. But I think more importantly, it's not so much of a diverse workforce, but specifically around this piece on racial injustice. It's important for companies and for students to consider, is this company really paying attention to equity when it comes to black people? So give me an example of what a young person should look for specifically. Begin to look at who's on their board. Begin to look at who's in leadership because a number of companies are scrambling right now to diversify their board and diversify their leadership team. So start looking for those as a, a starting point, but also look and see who might be in their marketing material because some companies are really good at that and some are not. 
look and see what charities they support. So you can begin to trace that footstep beyond just what's written in a statement. And how have they shown up in the media in the past? It seems that when it comes to career pathing, there's a lot more to um, consider these days. And yeah. that's a good example of just one thing. It used to be that maybe you'd think you'd graduate, you'd find the right job, you're mm -hmm. set up. It just works a lot differently now than in the past. Doesn't it? I remember when I graduated over 25 years ago, I thought I'd have one career and that will be it. I think for young people now, it's important to think about multiple streams of income, not just a job. I think COVID-19 has taught us that one position is not enough. And especially because we're virtual, there are a number of organizations who are, some are not going back to the workplace as we know it. But now is the time to begin to look at what skill sets you have, diversify those skill sets. Don't be afraid to keep learning because your college degree doesn't guarantee you anything. It simply is a ticket to get you in the door, a ticket to get you on the plane tree, so to speak. So now is the time to diversify your skill set and look at multiple ways in which you can earn income and not just with a job, with a degree that you have from your university or college. Karen, what's your thought on having investments if you just earned a college degree or maybe you went to trade school, but in terms of making financial investments, do they pay off from that point, whether you're taking a class or getting a certification? Because starting a career costs a lot of money for people. Um, so should they continue to outlay money if they're trying to move forward? No. So I, I know that we traditionally, <laughs> we traditionally thought everyone in the country, go to college, get a degree, and life is going to be perfect. That is no longer true. It never really was true to begin with. We have people with different skill sets. Not everybody is meant to sit behind a desk. There are people who love to work with their hands. And we've taken away the value from the trades, but there are lots of different trade opportunities in the manufacturing industry that is now clean manufacturing. So you don't have to get your hands dirty. And as a matter of fact, you probably make more than the person who laid out fifty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year for their college degree. So I highly encourage parents, first of all, to start with them. Stop pushing your children into four-year degree. Instead, look at the totality of your young person and figure out what do they need in order to be successful. They might be great as a mechanic or a plumber or an engineer in a manufacturing floor. It doesn't matter as long as that individual feels fulfilled because we want them to really work and grow in their excellence. Is that one of the biggest mistakes people make when they are career pathing is going on a course that was determined by somebody else? Oh my goodness, the expectations that people put on young people. You need to do it this way. Instead, we're at a time in our country and in the world where you can make money from almost everything. And it's important for people to connect with what they do well. Of course, we know they have to build up their skill sets. But once you find that, don't just push people into what you think they should do, but allow them to discover themselves. We won't have as many miserable people as we do now who <laughs> can't stand their careers. What do you mean that you can make money um, doing anything? Now think about it. How many years ago did you really think we could make money being an Instagram influencer? or social media manager. What was that? We had no clue what those careers really were. And now we see different individuals being able to work remotely and still be able to contribute to an organization's productivity. So it's, it's important now for us not to think about the traditional careers, doctor, lawyer, engineer. Think about instead of what skill set and what problems can I help a company solve? How can I contribute to the overall excellence of an organization? And that's a big question for a young person, but we want to have them start thinking as problem solvers because, as you may have noticed, a number of organizations are beginning to remain in the remote space. They're not going back to work as usual and their productivity is what's gonna be measured, not you showing up to work and being a living, breathing individual and you get a, a hand clap for showing up. It's what are you willing to produce? What can you offer the company? It sounds like from what you're saying too that you're able to take control of your financial future and not just rely on your company. And what I'm thinking about with that question is, people used to think you could get a secure job and maybe you'd get a pension 
or mm -hmm. 401k and you could kind of sit back a little bit and not worry but the environment is different now so if you have the potential within yourself mm -hmm. to maybe get the side hustle or the gig job you're setting yourself up a little bit better potentially almost oh, definitely i think gone are the days when employees relied on their employer for their financial security long term this is an individual opportunity for us to first understand finance as early as middle school or earlier. I would say when you have elementary school students, start introducing them to the concept of money and earning and showing up and doing a great job. And by the time that once they start earning money, they should know about investments and how to take control of their financial future, understand about credit, understand about savings and stocks and bonds, because no one is going to take care of you. You are responsible for you. And that is no longer the expectation that companies would do that for their employees. Can you share an example of somebody you might have worked with who you had to guide in terms of career pathing that maybe they, they thought they were making a mistake but really couldn't figure out the next way to go? Yes, we have a number of different people that we work with in the last in a few years. And I think the piece that comes across is we had one individual, uh, a young woman, she was at the very beginning stages of her career. She had managerial experience, but really thought that she was too young to apply for certain jobs. And I kept explaining to her, it's about what do you bring to the table? Know your value, don't look at your age. No, we've all worked summer jobs, we've all wor worked some kind of opportunity while they're in school. So to bring that into the equation, and we were able to help her reconsider the career path she was on and elevate her point of entry, instead of just being a regular in, uh, employee who's entering at the very bottom, we were able to reposition her to take advantage of her previous managerial experience that she brought to the table. What are some mistakes that people make along the way as they're just starting out in their careers? I would say they underestimate the value of relationships. So they believe that I have a college degree, yay, life is perfect, and that is not true. So taking the time to build relationships and not just call and say, hi, I need a job. I tell young people, you have something called the cuteness factor. And the cuteness factor is at this stage in your life, everybody wants to help a young person. They want to see the next generation flourish. So I tell young people, take advantage of it before you, it runs out, because once you graduate, it's done. You now become competition. So use your cuteness factor to reach out uh, through your, um, your alumni network, reach out on LinkedIn, and let people know that you're here to learn, you want to get to know others, build relationships, learn about their career mistakes, learn about their career successes, and do that. So relationship is one. I think the second thing is confidence. At that age, you are so conflicted. You're not quite sure what to believe about your abilities. So asking young people to really get to the point where they're confident, not overconfident, there's a difference because don't expect to be the CEO the first six months you're there. But know that you do have abilities to offer and it might be enthusiasm and time and your willingness to learn, but really take the time to get to know what value you bring to the table. I think of the TV show, The Office, and all the various characters in there, right? So everyone's got different personalities just in life. And for some people, it's hard to actually do some of the things you're saying. It's mm -hmm. hard to network with people. Um, they might feel kind of stuck in the box, or maybe they're um, growing up in an area where they haven't been exposed to people and all sorts of different kind of jobs. So how, how about people that have kind of the tougher either personality or background to, even in their own minds, visualize um, a possibility? Start with one small thing, and that might be sending a LinkedIn connection or even setting up your LinkedIn profile. It might be talking to a supervisor, a former supervisor, or finding someone who's a professor or finding someone who is in your community because it starts with one step. I remember I was very terrified of networking. I've now written a book on networking, believe it or not. But it's important for that individual to know that one, it starts with belief in yourself. You might not have the blueprint. You might not know all of the steps, but believe that you're able. Believe that the possibility is there for you. And once you take that first step, someone is always there willing to say, let me reach back. And if there's no one the first, second, third, fourth, or even 10th time, 
to keep pressing forward until you find your tribe, that individual who's going to hold you by the hand and say, let me show you the ropes. I know what it's like to be in that position. I'm, I came from the Caribbean. My parents didn't have any connections in the U.S. So I speak from experience when I say, take the first step. Believe in yourself and knock down the doors until someone says yes. Have a great attitude and ensure that you continually follow up. Karen Hines, it's been great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone.